this show, Harold starts his own news network, Bill goes downhill skiing, and I'm going to show you how to make a super duper toolorama. Here's a man who has all the friends and he knows how to use them. He's so diplomatic, his favorite color is plaid. <laughs> Here's my uncle, Mr. Red Green. Thank you, Harold, for that uh, intro. Those were compliments, were they? You got that one right, big fella. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, he means well. Wouldn't it be great if he did well? <laughs> or was well? <laughs> anyway, we've had a real catastrophe up here at the lodge with one of the rocks. <laughs> It's a rock, Uncle Red. What can go wrong with a rock? <laughs> it's a rock. Well, it, actually, it wasn't, it wasn't so much the rock. It was what happened to the backhoe after, after the rock was moved. Oh, it rolled into the van? No. Roll, rolled into a tree? No, no. Uh, Harold, think about a, a large body of lukewarm fluid. Rolled into Moose Thompson. <laughs> Possum Lake, Harold. Oh, oh, that. Rolled into Possum Lake. Yeah, I should have. That's, oh, that's all right. Boy, you make a lot of mistakes. Yes, I do. <laughs> but I don't blame them on rocks. <laughs> this was my granddaddy's farm a hundred years ago. He won it in a card game. Everyone else had the sense to fold. <laughs> The ground is as hard as really, really hard material. The water tastes like eggs. But luckily, the government stepped in and paid him not to grow stuff, which was more or less his specialty. <laughs> This week on Handyman Corner, we're going to show you how to build something that'll help you build everything you ever build. Because the one biggest danger to face with every handyman is not hitting your thumb with a hammer or cutting off your finger at the knuckle or even catching your nose hairs in the lathe. <laughs> it's losing your tools. It just seems that, uh, you know, you put a tool down, uh, say a pair of pliers, you know, or a, or a hammer, and uh, two or three seconds later, you go and look for it, and you can't find it, and you end up rooting through everything. And after a couple hours, you find it out, out in the trunk of your car and you have no idea how it got there. <laughs> this is because when you're not watching tools, they'll get up and they'll walk away on you, just like kids. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'll tell you what happened last week. Uh, Bill uh, did some bungee jumping off the roof of the lodge and uh, I got an idea. Actually, actually, it gave me two ideas. The first one being, don't ever bungee jump by tying a bunch of old jock straps together, <laughs> especially when Somebody's going by in a lawn tractor. <laughs> and uh, secondly, uh, I got the idea, why don't we make a bungee belt to, to hold all our tools? Okay, well, the first thing you gotta do is gather up all your tools. These are a few that I found uh, around the bench and on the floor, in my pockets and, and up the chimney. <laughs> okay, now you're gonna need a big wide belt, like the kind uh, the lumberjacks use or the telephone repairmen or Actually, uh, maybe you have one of these yourself if you went to the disco, say, 73, Saturday Night Fever kind of a thing. Uh, I use this one to hold the muffler onto the possum van. <laughs> okay, now you need some stretchy cords. Anything will do, really. Uh, these are real good. Uh, this is a phone cable. Hard to come by, though, because uh, they've switched to that uh, metal flexible stuff in the pay phones. <laughs> and then, of course, you got your bungee cords. You've got some lamp cord in here. There's the rubber hose from the lodge sick room. <laughs> and we got a slinky, an old slingshot. Step one, attach all this stuff to your belt. And there you have it. I've turned myself into a more efficient handyman, or a hula dancer. <laughs> now all I gotta do is uh, attach the tools to the end. Oh, I'll go back to my little <laughs> brand new shot. And I want to kill Okay, now, I say I have to install a jacuzzi or unclog a drain, and uh, all I need is my pipe wrench. So, just grab my pipe wrench. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> all right, uh, I, I need to organize this a little bit. I, what I need is to, to mark each, each chord so I know what's on it. So I'll just, I'll get my pencil, my pencil, my pencil. Uh, there's the pipe wrench. Okay, well, this the whole thing needs to need to be organized. Hang on, hang on a minute. <laughs> Okay, now I got everything labeled in alphabetical order from uh, ABS cement right around to zinc sulfate. <laughs> so I want to find my uh, pipe wrench. Uh, here we are, level, mallet, nails, oil stone, paintbrush, paint scraper, pipe, here we go, pipe, pipe cutter, pliers. <laughs> oh no, no, I live under wrench, W, wrench, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, here we are, here we are, here we are. Wrench adjustable, wrench monkey, Ranch pipe, here we are. Uh, you want to make sure those are really uh, snug down there, and maybe to do that, you could use the handyman secret weapon uh, duct tape. So, let's see. Calipers, cleaver, dados, drill, drill bit, duct tape. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so we got this, and I got another idea. My screwdrivers and the smaller tools don't fit on the belt real well. I need a couple of belts over the shoulders, and I'll attach that with this stuff, and uh, this is going to take a little bit of time. So why don't we get on with the show, and I'll get her all built, and we'll come right back. And now it's that part of the show where we expose the three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and here to prove that point is my Uncle Red, and of course his best friend, Mr. Hop Shaughnessy. <laughs> Here's today's letter. Dear experts, Aww. last fall, my brother went deer hunting and gave me some venison steaks, but I forgot to refrigerate them. This spring, after the snow thawed, I noticed the meat was still sitting on the back porch rail where I left it last November. <laughs> Do you think the meat is still safe to eat? <laughs> I don't think we need an expert to answer this one. <laughs> oh, that's right, Harold. Uh, the meat will be just fine. <laughs> Isn't that right, Hap? Yeah, one winter's nothing. I remember when I uh, led a group of archaeologists uh, diggers from the uh, University of Tel Aviv on an expedition to Greenland, and we came across this dinosaur that was frozen and uh, buried in the glacial tundra, and I thawed it out, and uh, the meat was delicious. So you ate brontosaurus, huh? No, not bronto. Yeah, no, this was strato. Stratocumulosaurus. It had fallen in a, into an ice crevice and it was perfectly preserved. All except the tip of the tail. That was a bit rancid. Well, he's the expert on rancid tails. <laughs> so tell everybody, uh, how did the dinosaur taste? Dinosaur's a bit gamier than anaconda, and, but not quite as fatty as, say, a killer whale. There's a lot more meat on the Stratocumulosaurus. Yeah, it was a big fella. Right up to the clouds, I bet, huh? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to bring back all the extra flesh and maybe try to market my own brand of dinosaur meat, you know? And I, I, uh, I registered my own uh, trademark, brand name. Haps Dino Dogs? <laughs> no. Jurassic Pork. It is winter. The animals are warmly tucked away in their dens with a case of too far and the remote controller. <laughs> okay, there we go. I can go anywhere and fix anything at any time. I need a curved rasp plane, got it. Compass saw, got it. Screwmate drill bit, what do you think? <laughs> now what else could I use? Well, it's always nice to have a little extra light on a job. Or say uh, a third hand would come in handy. And a lot of the guys at the lodge say that I could use a little head protection. <laughs> well, why not combine all three? That's handyman thinking. <laughs> OK, so there it is. I can now go anywhere at any time and fix anything. Although I wouldn't advise going out into the woods when the moose are in heat. <laughs> I have added another uh, safety element here with a little yogurt tub full of baking soda. So if I'm soldering or welding or what have you, and uh, suddenly the whole workbench and most of the furniture is on fire, I can just uh, lean forward quickly. And uh, hopefully the fire goes out fast, because I actually have my face 
uh, right right into the flames at that point. <laughs> so it's really uh, it's a, a wearable workshop, uh, kind of a neat looking unit. Uh, it's a fashion statement really that says, "Hey world, I'm a tool." <laughs> so until next time, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. I think I'll just go and uh, change the oil in the furnace. <laughs> Don't worry, I can fix that. <laughs> Dougie! Yo! Getting up in the world, are you? Well, actually, not as up as I may appear to be, Red, I'll tell you. If you ever in your life get a chance to grub over a taxi, I would suggest you remove that little sign from the roof first. <laughs> That's just some damage, did it? Well, sir. Tell you, those suckers are made out of kryptonite or something. That ripped right through my oil pan like a bumper through a bus shelter. Wow. Thank you. Do you think this uh, monster truck here could pull my back hole out of Possum Lake? Well, not unless scavenge me a new oil pan, it won't. Besides, you know, if I were you, I'd, uh, I'd recommend that you, uh... <laughs> I mean, you just leave that back hole down there if I were you. Well, that'd be a little hard on the lake, wouldn't it? Make the water taste like backfill. Contraire, mon frere. Actually, it's quite good for the lake. Well, here we go. Yeah, apparently, uh, them little fish, they need a place to grow in, you know, a place to grow up. They call them, they call them fingerlings, I think. And, uh, you know, without that place to grow, them little suckers, whoo, if they didn't have a place to hide, they'd stand about as much chance as a Honda Civic in one of them monster truck crusher ammos. So what you're saying is the backhoe sort of acts like a daycare center for the little fishies. Oh, well, that's it. That's it, exactly. I mean, oh, oh geez, you gotta watch your head this, baby. I'll tell you, I had a friend of mine, he rolled a semi right over the third line bridge into Mercury Creek. Well, you know, I would have thought that bridge was too narrow for a big truck. Well, it is, but that's why he was up on two wheels, and he would have made it right across there, too, if this gust of wind hadn't come along and just dumped him right over there like a turtle on his back. But you know what? He left that sucker there. Gets a check from the government, said he created an artificial reef for fingerling conservation. If you had half a brain, you could cash in on that yourself, Red. Golly, the government is paying you to throw wrecks into the lake. You're sitting on a gold mine here, Doug. Red, Red, I'm not in this for the money. All this stuff you're looking at here, this is my joie de vivre. This is my hobby. This is for my friends. This ain't some get-rich-quick scheme, Red. <laughs> You're looking at my life here. Never seen anybody's life rust out quite this bad, Doug. <laughs> Beautiful, ain't it? You gotta love it. <laughs> You can imagine the excitement around here when the word got out that the government was paying people to throw crap in the lake. <laughs> I'll tell you, it pretty well uh, emptied the parking lot of the Yugo dealership. <laughs> Uncle Rat, you know, I don't think it's going to work unless you alter the pH. What's that, Harold? You sound like a shampoo commercial. No, you have to alter the pH, you know? You can't catch fish if the pH is too low, so you have to raise the pH, make it more alkaline. Aww. What, you gotta throw batteries in there? That's gonna cost a lot of money. <laughs> no, no, limestone. You have to dissolve limestone into the lake. Aww. Limestone? Limestone won't work. Limestone will kill all the fish. No, it helps. It's limestone, really. That's what you need, limestone. Well, all right, let's do a little test, Harold. I'll get a little piece of limestone. I'll put it in your eye. <laughs> and you tell me if it helps or hurts. <laughs> I don't think the threats are going to solve anything here. Well, neither is limestone. <laughs> OK, OK. So we'll get in touch with the right people, and we'll find out what to use and how to use it, and more importantly, how to get our hands on that government money, or as we call it, our change. What are you doing, Harold? <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the men, the men of the lodge, our friendship lasts longer than the warranty on a dodge. <laughs> I need them and trust them, and I'm always on their side. Unless the situation involves money or an attractive woman, or preferably both. <laughs> 
Kind of a winter adventure with Bill today, so I drove over there and... Whoops. Oh. Oh, he's going to drive close to the curb, I thought. And what? What is that? Oh, there's, I think there's one more... Let's see, one more ski to come yet. Ah! Ah, there it is. Okay. Now, Bill wanted to try some uh, downhill skiing, and uh, he had gotten all the equipment together, and uh, actually two of the skis were mine, uh, so I picked them up, and uh, he had to pull. Oh, yeah, it looked like we were... And it was a good day to just get... Uh, you know, there's something about Bill that makes you want to go home as soon as you get there. Anyway, uh, he picked out a heck of a hill. This thing was practically straight down. It was so steep I could hardly keep my pants up. <laughs> but uh, we, no, I don't enjoy this part of skiing, you know, where you got to walk all the way. We, of course, we don't have the, the, the tow rope things at Boston Lodge. Anyway, I'm up there, and Bill, he's, he's pretty bag, you know. He's, a, he's an older fella, you know. And I'm old, old, old. So now I'm feeling about the same as him. But he jams the skis in there, and he's got this, uh, apparently this ski wax is real slippery stuff, but it gives you a little extra, extra spin when you're going, so, oh, 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 thank you, Bill. And he puts that all over the skis, and they're just, get, well, there you go, now you get the idea. So he puts my skis down to show them, and then, well, Bill, Bill, the skis seem, yeah, 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 goodbye. Oh, man. Down he goes. <laughs> Starting to enjoy this now. Oh, not quite so much, but enjoyed that. So I walk all the way down, see what the heck's going on, because those are my skis down there, and so far I'm enjoying myself real well. Now oh, Bill's okay. That's good news, I guess. My skis didn't fare quite so well. What do we do now, Bill? Yeah, he goes back skiing. I'm finished for the day. So up he goes, and boredom is sitting in pretty deep for me now. And yeah. Six of holes in there. I don't, he's, he's kind of frozen. I think he melted a bit into the snow, and then, but then, oh, I think, oh, he's not, no poles, no poles. Oh, 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 the heck with this. I've had enough. Skiing with Bill is a total drag. And now here's something for you young people, because you're young and you're strong, and you'll eventually recover from this. For the first time anywhere, here is the Herald News Network with Harold Green, bringing you all the news that'll be of interest to teenagers. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I'm Harold Green, and here's our top stories for tonight. Um, the older generation continues to ruin the world and destroy the Earth's ecosystem. Old people started three more world wars that we young people are gonna go have to fight in. <laughs> On the economic front, old people hold all the jobs that we young people could probably do way more better if we'd given like half a chance even maybe, huh? <laughs> New scientist evidence has just shown that people over the age of 20 lose some 10,000 brain cells a day. Scientists believe that this can account for the world's problems from global warming to cafeteria food. <laughs> Spunky, oh, this just handed in to me. This late breaking news. Police may soon be investigating the mysterious disappearance of a 17 year old boy named Harold. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all the news there is from the Herald News Network. I'm Harold Green saying goodnight. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of you teenagers don't like to hear advice, but communication is an important part of life. And besides, who cares what you think? There's a lot of stuff that you don't know. And I'm guessing that there's one, maybe even two experts right there in your own home. And this, of course, is your parents. So if you're wondering what it's like to be really, really intoxicated or, say, caught naked in a public place, why not ask the people who've been there? Mom and Dad. Especially Mom. <laughs> Bob, uh, with these fish and so on, is there is there some kind of a chemical that we can add add to the lake that'll help with the acidity and so on? Limestone. Limestone? <laughs> oh, no, I knew that. Uh, what I wanted to know was there was there some other chemical that would work? No. Oh, all right, all right. 
Is there, a, is there another name for limestone that, say, somebody like a Harold or somebody wouldn't know? Calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate. Yes. Great. Calcium All right. carbonate. Thanks, Bob. Good. I'll get back now, and, 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 and good luck with your land slope test. Eh? All right, thanks. <laughs> Uncle Red, is that you? <laughs> what? I just said, is that you? No, I thought you said statue. <laughs> anyway, this uh, limestone mess turned out to be a real disaster. <laughs> Pardon me? Did you say limestone? <laughs> no, I meant calcium carbonate. <laughs> what? Calcium carbonate, Harold. I asked an expert. I asked him about the limestone, and he said use calcium carbonate. <laughs> Uncle Red, calcium carbonate is limestone. Don't push it, Harold, all right? <laughs> so we socked four tons of limestone into the lake, which cost us 280 bucks, and then we got a check from the government for 102, so it's just like income tax time again, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> okay. All right, well, think, think of it this way. You did something good for the fish, and who knows, maybe you'll retrieve the backhoe. Oh, no, no, no. When the lime... When the calcium carbonate hit the backhoe, it just kind of disintegrated into a cloud of rust, kind of a low rumble, bad smell, and then the tires popped to the surface. Well, there you go. The, the tires, the tires are probably worth something. They popped through the boathouse. <laughs> then they just popped. Then they sank, taking my new canoe with them. Oh. <laughs> well, hey, you, you tried your best, young fella. Don't blame yourself. I don't, Harold. I blame you. <laughs> Why, what did I do? I didn't do anything. Well, you're the guy that was using the rock as the emergency brake for the backhoe, weren't you? I, uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> and, and anyway, let's just remember who used the backhoe last. <laughs> all right, well, I'll blame the rock. It's what I want to do in the first place anyway. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, all right, forget that, Uncle Red, because it's meeting time. That's the fox and squeal. All right, Harold, you, you go ahead. I'll be, I'll be right now. <laughs> well, that, that's, that's about it for this show. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting, unless it rains and I harden. <laughs> and uh, to the rest of you, on behalf of myself and uh, Rockhead and a whole bunch of heroes here up at the Boston Lake Lodge, thanks for watching and keep your stick on the ice. Yeah.